Hey everyone, Nick on here from the Hyperactive Bookworm. I am so excited to do this book review. Now, I have been holding on a lot of my reviews at the moment because I have been so sick. You can still hear it a little bit in my voice. It'll probably get worse by the end of the video, but I, I couldn't wait any longer and I finally have some time and I am so excited to talk about this book. All right, so the book is the Heartbeat of a Million Dreams by Halo Scott. Halo Scott actually reached out to me and sent me a review copy. Thank you so much. I am so glad you did. I love discovering new authors, especially for books that are sapphic and especially for authors I hadn't heard of before. I love finding indie authors. I love being able to talk about them. I love being able to highlight books and authors that I don't see much around. So th that was really exciting. What was even more exciting was, oh my gosh. So this is a novella and I feel like there is so much more in this than some novels I've read. I freaking loved this book. So within the first two chapters, I had so many thoughts, so many thoughts one of the main thoughts was, oh my gosh, sapphic version of Philip K. Dick. So Philip K. Dick, for anyone who doesn't know, is this major sci-fi author from the past who his writing was very sci-fi, but he wrote very dirty, gritty worlds and future dystopic. And there was just a, a beauty in his words as well it was not it was literary but not like it was literary without the heavy density that you would struggle to get through well at least for me this is how I I took it um so I was I was blown away by the writing I loved it um it made me and for the rest of the book the entire book was like this I finished this book so excitedly like I was so excited to get through it and then it broke me a little bit because I was oh it's over but I want so much more of this the style the beauty the characters I want more so um just going back to the Philip K Dick thing because yes this is totally going to be the most tangential review it is going to be a little bit of an insight into my non-linear brain thinking and I don't care because I just love this book and I I could talk about it for hours and I'll try not to make it hours. So I um have completely lost my train of thought now. Don't remember what I was gonna say. So uh going back to the Philip K. Dick thing, um you may not have heard of him. He did rewrite a very popular book called Um To Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. And that became the basis of the movie, the Harrison Ford movie, Blade Runner. Dirty, gritty, dystopian future. Absolutely freaking brilliant. That is not, um, the storyline of that or anything is nothing like, um, nothing like the heartbeat of a million dreams, but it has the feel and that dirty dystopian future. Now, this is totally going to age me as well. I'm sure that movie reference also aged me. But this is going to age me and I really don't care because I'm trying to explain the power reading this book had to me and trying to find a way that I can express it. And one thing that just kept popping up in my head is there is from the original L Word series, I know, I know, so gay, but I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm okay with it. So Bet Porter, the character, goes into Peggy Peabody's place. You know, she's an art director and curator and curator of a museum and all that stuff. And she loves art and, and there's a scene and it has always affected me. It, it's beautiful. And she sees this painting that she adores in real life for the first time. And you, you see this scene where she just, it affects her so much. She just starts crying and the power 
and the beauty of it. That's how I felt with reading this book. I, I'm not too ashamed to say that, yeah, I had some tears from the beauty of it, from the reminder that I don't just love stories. I love words. I love the way words can be used and manipulated in the most beautiful and wonderful ways. Now, let's actually get to the book. So I love this book, obviously, but the book itself is amazing. The story is fantastic. It is, like I said, sci-fi, future dystopia. It is Mars versus Earth. It has star children, which I love this concept. I want to see more of the star children. And it has this main character. One of the main characters is the most hunted human being. And I need water. Well, coffee. <laughs> That's my water. Um, is the most hunted human being. And she actually doesn't know why. So she's been hunted her whole life. Saying her name will send off, like, alarms everywhere in the built city of Mars. And Mars is this sort of dirty, grungy um, colony that, you know, the star children have been sent because they're not good enough. And it's heartbreaking and wonderful. But this main character, her chapters, so it's alternate chapters between the two main characters. But Slade's main character, I'm almost waiting for the alarms to go off. Slade's main character is absolutely wonderful. She is neurodivergent and it is the best example of the chaos that you know some people it's such a great representation I know there are so many types of neurodivergence and there are different ways people handle it but I have not read such an amazingly wonderful representation and it it touched me and it made me just really think about the things that I take for granted that I understand. And it also helped me understand the way I think in some of the things that aren't typical. And it was amazing. Now, the other main character is also absolutely divine. She runs the, she's the leader of the kind of rebels um, who their their goal in life is to actually save Slade and it's fascinating and wonderful and the whole book is about them living sort of parallel but together but not and it's just amazing and I didn't see the end coming and I and I loved that and but to be fair I didn't even I almost didn't care where it was going because it was such a beautiful, beautiful journey. And that made me so happy and wonderful. And Halo Scott, I cannot wait to read more of your stuff. I have been told that more of Halo stuff is darker horror. Um, but if the writing's anything like this, I am all for it. So bring it on. Definitely, if you are into any kind of sci-fi, any kind of dystopia, if you love words, these words are amazing. I'm sure it has very much triggering aspects in it, um, but I can't. I can't praise this book enough. I loved it. I I need to get a tangible copy of it so I can destroy it with love. Um, I love it. I I would love to see more of these star children, more of this world. Kudos, Halo Scott. I'll be checking out more of your work. Thanks, y'all.